hey guys and welcome back to my channel i'm coming back to y'all with a new video ain't y'all proud of me <laughs> put a video up this week and i'm just coming in to do a traditional sew in i know y'all like these type of videos and everybody's getting tired of lace so i'm just this was an impromptu kind of recording so i didn't get many pictures i didn't get any pictures at the end we just recorded while i was doing it but i'm going to show you how to do everything from start to finish and it's super detailed i just shampooed and conditioned her hair and we're just about to go through and blow dry everything so i'm just using my little paddle brush to kind of detangle from the ends to the roots and the video is moving a little bit fast so it may seem like i'm pulling her hair but i'm not this is just because the video is sped up and then here i'm going in with my blow dryer and my um uh comb attachment from sally's and i'm just getting the hair dry thoroughly and straightened out as much as i can with the blow dryer so I'm, you're gonna see me doing that and i'm just gonna continue to blow dry until it's all dried and and straightened out stretched out i want to say stretched out so this is how it looks when it's blow dried and stretched out she has like super thick a lot a lot of hair and it's super thick so yeah okay so here is the part where i'm going to be sectioning out her leave out y'all know i am middle part deficient because i can't part a middle part to save my life like even the um after looking at this the leave out that i parted out was was off center but i mean it was enough hair where i could make the part in the exact center of her head i don't know what's wrong with me when i do that but that happens but anyway i'm just parting a section out and you want to do it about a fingers width um two fingers width so you just part that out and then tie it back or braid it down or anything like that. And then I also braided down the little hairs on the side. That way she'll be able to have a little versatility with the sew-in. So I braided those areas down, down on the side. And then I'm about to start braiding, y'all. So I'm just sectioning off her uh, first braid. And I do the, the first braid or two in like a... I want to say a U shape so I just take one braid from this side and one braid from the other side and I connect them and also I'm going to be using hair and these um, two braids so the first two braids I call them my anchor braids so I use hair for them and y'all gonna see me doing that coming up next Okay, y'all, y'all, if y'all been with me for a while, you know that I use Shining Jam to secure my braids uh, because my hands are so old and tired. I can't hardly grip the hair that tight anymore. So I have to use something to help me secure the braids. So I find that the um, Shining Jam, if you put it on there and kind of comb through a little bit, it will help you get like a really secure braid. And then if you um, pair it with some braid hair, you're going to have a really good foundation for your sew-in. So um, the first couple braids on each side, I usually use a little bit of braid hair to like really make sure that the foundation of the sew-in is secure and that those braids are not going to move or start unraveling in the process. Even though she has a lot of hair, I still want to add just the tiniest bit of braid hair into the um, braid just to make sure everything is secure and when you're doing the sew-in that's like one of the main things you don't want to um, be wearing the sew-in and then the hair starts to come loose or the tracks are not staying onto the braid so I want to use that shiny jam in conjunction with the braid hair and then you get a tight but not 
um, painful like braid. So you have a, a braid that will sustain the life of the sew-in, which is about, for my sew-in, is about two months. So six weeks to two months after that, you should be getting ready to get a new sew-in. But anyway, I just braid it down. I braid the first two braids uh, into a U shape. So y'all gonna see me braid down and around halfway on the, the nape of the hair, the back. I'm just gonna stop in the middle of the back of her hair and then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side if y'all don't have shining jam and all that you don't have to use it I just I, that's what I use in order to keep the braid tight for me because I know I don't braid braiding is not my strong point anymore so and then I just did the same thing to the other side and I connected that braid the first braid I did to the second braid and there is your first U shape okay so I'm gonna do the same thing again only this time I'm not gonna go into a U shape I'm just gonna braid straight down and we're gonna start connecting all the loose ends of the braid so um, I didn't use any braid hair for this braid I just use the shiny jam and I'm just braiding really thoroughly making sure that the hair is braided um, making sure the hair is braided really well so that it will not unravel and she just didn't need any braid hair she has a lot a lot of hair if you want to use braid hair throughout the sewing you can but she didn't need um, braid hair for all of the braids and see I'm just gonna connect that last braid i just did to for the u-shape i'm going to connect it to that braid so on the back you're going to have it's going to be like two braids going across the back and that is uh the bottom of the foundation so yeah it's super easy to do if you're doing it on somebody or you're doing your own hair it's easy to connect that braid into the other one and i'm not going to do a whole bunch of braids i'm going to do probably about 10 braids i believe because I do not believe in doing a whole bunch of braids on the client's hair. I just like to get the braids secure enough for them for them to last through the sew-in. But I want to make it easier for them because most of my clients, they take their own sew-in down at home. So I just want to make it easy as I can for them to remove it without damaging their hair or cutting out any of their hair or anything like that. So y'all see what I did there. We're just going to lift the next braids up and that's all you have to do just connect the next braids and this how it looks y'all yeah i'm using that beauty supply store here i think it was called queen it came from the beauty supply she bought it i think it was like 18 18 and 20 so y'all don't have to go out and break the bank to get hair just go get you some hair from the beauty supply if you don't or you're not able to buy any online or from any of these hair boutiques or anything just go to the beauty supply and get you some beauty supply hair it will last you at least one so in and um this braid here i'm just gonna tuck it i'm not gonna sew it because i do not like doing all of that sewing and it, it makes it harder for the client to take the hair down especially if they're taking it down on their own so y'all that's the braid pattern i don't know if y'all can see it that good but that is the braid pattern and then here i'm just going to attach the first track and i'm just going to start at the nape and I'm going to go side to side. And I'm going to be in the back for the first couple rows. And I'm just securing the track on there. Just do it. And then I don't know what that knot is called. I think it's like a slip knot, a fisherman's knot, something like that. You just want to do like a little knot. You see how I'm doing it? I, don't, I should have slowed it down right there. I didn't. But I'm just um, crossing the um, thread and twice and then pulling it and it'll stay secure for you. If you don't know how to do that little knot that I'm doing, um, just do over and under or under and over. It, it works just the same. Just wanna make sure your ends are secure so that nothing is coming loose. And that's all you have to do. You just do it, you know, what's easiest for you to do because you don't have to use my exact sewing technique. You can do your own. And then here we're just gonna flip over the the whip in the back i do i do a little different i just flip it over and i secure the ends really well 
and I just do that little knot that I do. I do it a couple times, and then once you run out of thread, I don't cut that thread right there. I don't end that thread right there. What I do is I put another thread in, and I tie those in a knot about two to three times, and then I cut it to make sure that nothing is going to come loose. And so that's all you're going to do. And so I'm just continuing to sew side to side and once you get up about the occipital bone around there that's when you're going to start to uh, move towards the front the sides in the front you can bring the hair up a little bit further and then i don't know if y'all can tell how i'm doing this sewing i pull one of those tracks back and i'm only sewing on the the bottom track right now and then I'm gonna sew that other track down too just to make sure that it's flat and seamless right there like it's not gonna be bulky at all so I pulled one the the top track I pulled it back and then I sewed uh, a little bit further and then flipped it over so that's what I did and you just want to do that to make sure that it is not bulky at all okay see and then she can kind of pull it back and then what i'm going to do is use a little bit of the got to be spray just to make sure everything is laying down well in a duckbill clip i'm just going to put that duckbill clip there just to make sure that the tracks are not bulky or not ain't no like uh the beard of the hair make sure it's not sticking out and all of that so it's um nothing crazy sticking out or anything but yeah i don't know y'all can see the braid pattern just a little bit better now i believe and I'm just gonna continue sewing from side to side. And I, what I do is I put a clip in on the other side to keep the hair where exactly I want it to stay. And so that's what I was doing over there, adding one of those duckbill clips on the side, just to make sure that the hair does not move and I can sew in a straight line. And um, so yeah, I'm just going, doing the same thing. The same thing, I'm just sewing side to side.
Okay, after you're done sewing um, all the other parts of the hair, all the way up to the part, um, this is the only place that I actually cut a track. Everything else I sew and fold, sew and fold. But this right here, I measure out a track that fits around the leave out area and on the top part of the uh, braids. And um, I do a little seamless method. So the first um, time I sew the track in, I just kind of loop it around with the little lock stitch that I usually do. And then on the rest of the tracks, I'll just um, go through the braid and under the threads of the track on the bottom of the track. So you will never see the thread on top of that track at all. And it's going to sit really close to the... Um, to the part and the leave out is going to sit really flat and flush with the um part so it's not really bulky in that area at all it's going to just sit really really flat and i, I think y'all can see i kind of tried to put the camera over the top where you can see how flat is laying and also i took the flatter and i just kind of like ran it across the track part of the uh, hair the the whiff part the track i guess that's what it is just so it'll be extra flat and uh, not bulky at all and then i'm just going to continue to do that, do that over uh around that whole track so i'm just going through the braid and under the track through the whiff under the track not over the track at all so you won't see the the thread on the top of that track at all it'll just be laying flat and the only parts that'll have thread is the very end you'll just loop um just loop around it and do that little lock stitch at the very end of those tracks and it won't be bulky at all y'all gonna see how it is uh when i finish Okay, here I'm just going to start taking all the leave out hair down so that I can straighten it with the flat iron. And y'all see she had color. It turned out really cute um, the way it um, laid in the uh, sew-in after it was actually styled. She had just like a little streak of color in there already. So, we just work with it. And y'all, she got like super, super thick hair. So, if you have a client like that or if your hair is like that you want to use a good flat iron so that and some heat protectant so there, oh there's the heat protectant this the silk elements i believe that's the coconut one yeah coconut and you want to use like a good heat protectant like a wax stick and a good flat iron this is my um tool science flat irons it's old but it's still working and it says sell is this like one of the best flat irons out and uh but i'm just using that one to straighten out her hair and i'm just gonna get all the little pieces i can get that i can get with it because it's a bigger flat iron it's like one and a half inch i think and it's like extra long on the um barrel part so and i just um i'm doing the middle part y'all know i got a problem with making middle parts but i think i got this one <laughs> under control and i did spray a little bit of holding spray just to kind of hold this the the um flat iron so it'll stay straightened because um, she has like, super, super thick hair. I'm just using that even wax stick. And y'all, my shop is missed because I was moving this week. So that's why I'm throwing stuff back in a bag after I get through using it and all that. Um, but yeah, I'm just going through with the pressing comb. And I'm going to just press out her the rest of her edges that's live. And press out the roots of the um, leave out just to make sure everything is laying flat and looking really nice and smooth. And then here y'all, I'm going with those same curling irons, the tool science, and I'm just gonna do like some little barrel curls. Y'all know I do these all the time with the flat iron. And you just put the hair and flip it over and pull. And you have a nice little cute, cute curl. Can y'all see that? Yeah, that's like super cute like that. That's easy to do. You can do that on your own self. 
and you just want to get the hair straightened really good so this is um the hair after i um after i got through sewing it in and curling it and everything so i'm just gonna pull it to the front and i haven't styled it out yet that's just the hair with the curls in it and y'all we didn't get any good pictures so I just kind of had to slow it down so y'all can kind of see. And I'm just using a three-way claw comb. And I'm just going to comb through her curls. You definitely can leave the curls intact. And just kind of like mess with the front. Like frame the front part. Um, I didn't cut it or anything like that. I left the hair the length that it was. I think she had 18, 18, and 20. And it was so cute with that little stripe she had of color right there on the side. It was really, really cute and different. And I'm just clawing it out with the claw comb. Of course, you can leave those curls in there, especially if they're going to school. If you want to, you can leave the curls in and let them just comb them out once they um, get ready to go to school. But she was starting school the next day, so. And, um, yeah, this is it, y'all. Y'all, um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I... Uh, post a new video because I haven't had a lot of engagement but I know a lot of that is my fault share the video with y'all friends and on other social media sites and I have all my social media in the uh, bio leave a heart in the comments if you like this video if you loved it and um, y'all have a great rest of y'all day